Hi there, Chris Francis here. Welcome back to the never-ending story of uh, these raised veggie beds. Okay, so it's a cracking uh, winter's Sunday afternoon in Berry, and um, I was just thinking a couple of weeks ago, I thought maybe before um, this summer, I might put some type of irrigation in these raised beds. Um, they've been working really well, but if I don't water them, they get a bit dry because they're elevated. And um, then I thought back to when I first set these up and, and the, the concept of uh, creating a wicking bed. So uh, that's what we're here for this afternoon. We're going to have a little bit of a, a look at uh, turning one of these raised beds into a wicking bed. Now, um, what I've done to, uh, to make it a bit quicker for today, I've dug down about 500 mil and I've taken all that soil out and I've put it in containers here so I can put it back in later. And then I've taken some uh, black builder's plastic and created what will be a reservoir. So the, uh, the principle with a wicking bed is that you um, create a, a reservoir. Um, so theoretically this could fill up to, there's an overflow point here. So this would act like a swimming pool and then we're going to put soil on top. Now, the problem is if that was a swimming pool and soil on top, even if we could hold the soil there, as soon as the water level drops below the soil um, under surface, then there's nothing to wet it. So what we need is some type of medium in this pond to bring the water up. And that's where we're going to put in, and you can use either blue metal or um, so blue metal, gravel, whatever you want to call it. Um, you could use pebbles, so some type of um, small rock, or the other thing you could use um, is wood chip. And, uh, and the, the concept then is that that um, material in the water actually, through, uh, through a wicking action, rises up and then wets the underneath of the soil, and then the, the, the moisture's there for, if the plant roots are down there, um, the, the, the moisture's there for the plant roots, or it can just um, come up through the soil. So, uh, so that's what we're doing today. So just quickly, we've got the, um, we've got the plastic in. Now, I've, I've got a couple of old bits of um, ag pipe here. So they've got slots in them, and they'll just act to help that moisture move around, or that water move around. The other thing you can throw in, if, uh, just to save yourself a bit of, uh, bit of um, material, is some type of void former. I've got an old poly box here. Just make sure you put a hole in it so that when that water flows underneath it can rise up in there and that helps hold more water in this space. You could use an old bottle sitting in there like that. That's probably a bit tall but you could cut that off or even if it laid on its side. Again it's just a void for water to go. And um, the other thing we need to um, have initially is a point that we can look down and inspect and see whether there's any water in the bottom of this reservoir. I've put a, so, a slight slope to that spot, so that's actually the lowest point. So I know whatever water level is there, that's the, uh, the lowest point, so that'll, that'll show me how much is, um, is in there. Now, um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to just add one more thing to this, um, to the, to this wicking bed. And that's a little bit of a twist, a, a worm tower in the middle. So once we've filled it up, we're going to sit the worm tower on the, on the material. And then we're going to put worms and compost in here, and that will help feed the whole system. But I'll explain that a little bit more when we go. So first thing we've got to do is, um, is start filling up. Now, I've used, um, I'm going to use blue metal. I actually like the idea of, um, of using wood chip because uh, it's a little bit more sustainable. Um, but I need some blue metal for another job, so I bought a, bought a tonne the other day. So we've got everything there ready to go, so it's just a matter of pouring that in. All right, so um, we've got the gravel in. So it's pretty critical, firstly, that um, you're a little bit higher with the, uh, with, the, with the gravel or wood chip than your overflow pipe. So my overflow pipe's about inch, inch and a quarter. Uh, that's uh, 32 mil for those of you who like metric. Um, and I've filled to about the top of the overflow pipe because 
what, what you don't want is any of this being lower than the overflow because otherwise it'll it'll be um, waterlogged and it's pretty important that in this whole system that everything's able to drain back down into this um, into this medium below so we've filled up the gravel um, checked its level uh, we've just given that a bit of a, a screed off and next thing I'm going to do is I'll run along and cut the um, cut the plastic off and I'm going to tape that plastic onto the metal. Now, you probably don't really need to do that. It's just, I, I just, it, it will keep it a bit neater. It stops a bit of soil going down the outside. So I thought it'd be nice to, uh, to tape it up. Okay, so uh, we've cut off that black, pla black plastic. I've um, taped up the edge, so it looks nice and sexy and um, that'll also stop the soil falling down the back. Like I said before, that's not really a, a showstopper, it's just, it's always nice if things are neat and tidy. Um, so the next thing is we've got to put some type of material down over the blue metal or wood chip um, to stop the soil going down and filling that up. Um, so look, there's a number of things that you could use here. You could use uh, weed mat, um, I was thinking old carpet. I've got a bit of old um, old underlay that um, I'm going to use. You, you want something that the moisture can um, can get through when it rains, um, and also that moisture can come up and, and wick through. And uh, what this does too, this will help disperse that that moisture evenly um, under the soil. So uh, what I've done, I've I've just pre-cut a hole for the uh, inspection pipe there. So we'll just pop that over that. Just push that neatly around. And there we go. We're ready to uh, to, to fill the um, fill the top back up with the soil. Now, if you were just doing a conventional wicking bed, It'd be soil back in, but we're doing it with the worm tower. So um, yeah, so it's got to go in first. Otherwise, obviously, uh, you're going to have problems. Now, I'd pop that in the middle. I've just used uh, for this just a piece of old um, nine-inch or 220 um, stormwater pipe. I had a couple of offcuts of these years back that I, uh, I used to use as um, strawberry towers so you can see there's still some holes drilled in here for strawberry plants and I can't see any reason why you couldn't grow things back in those holes once this is all operational so I'm going to pop that in the um, in the middle we'll just check its centre that's 290 315 That's centre. Oh, spot on. How's that? Um, all right, so now we're ready to put the soil back in. What I will do is I'll just pop um, a couple of bricks on top of this so it doesn't move around too much as the soil's going back in. So, like I said um, before, I just loaded all the soil into these containers so I can tip it back in. So um, that's what we'll do next. We'll put the soil in. I'm going to bring it up just below the, uh, the hardwood lip and, um, and then we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so it's the last bucket to go. Actually, um, you might be able to see, oh, there's a worm. Look at that. Hey, that's what we want. They're the good gear. Um, you might be able to see there's a bit of um, sand I've put in that too. I noticed when I um, when I dug this uh, this soil out that it was a little bit clayey, and um, so I took the opportunity. I mixed a a bag full of um, full of sand through it to go back in, and that'll just help that um, help the moisture drain down through the soil into that reservoir below. You know, one of the one of the great things about this um, 
these uh, these wicking beds as a as a system is that it doesn't get waterlogged because if when the when it rains everything just soaks straight down through into that um, into that reservoir and then um, if it's if it's too full it just comes out the overflow hole so um, yeah that's uh, that's um, that's nearly done now so you can see I'm just pushing that soil down a bit as well I've come up I've actually come up to the underside of that um, of the hardwood just working on the fact this is going to settle a bit so that'll uh, that'll drop it down a bit when I um, when I looked into just the uh, the basics of these wicking beds it seems as though the ideal thickness for both the water reservoir and the bed is about 200 mil or 8 inches um, so at the moment I've got probably more like 220 which is 9 inches of, uh, of material there on top but that'll, uh, that'll settle down over time and um, it should be all good so that's the um, that's it really ready to plant so really all we've got to do is we'll just um, load up this uh, this worm tower in a tick but um, that's uh, that's a wicking bed or a wicking worm bed okay so um, I've just grabbed a few bits and pieces to make a bit of compost um, so it's time to uh, load up the worm tower so take the bricks off because we don't need them anymore and well we can start with anything I've got here a bit of um, slightly decomposed chipper mulch so I'll put a bit of that in then a um, bit of uh, clippings from today's gardening they can go in worms fresh out of the veggie patch do your job there fellas bit of uh, bit of leaf mulch bit of uh, good old horse poo a bit fresher than I'd hoped actually but um yeah have to remember to wash my hands before we have peaches tonight <laughs> There we go, a bit of horse poo, push that down, a bit more greenery, a bit more wood chip, got a bit of um, chicken poo, just be careful with this, you don't want too much in there, don't want to, don't want to burn them, it's got, wood, uh, it's got wood chip through it too, so it's not too bad, but push that down a bit more a bit more leaf mulch horse poo you can see there's no um, real method to this just randomly throw it all in actually blow it paper doesn't hurt either Okay, that's one dead. All right, more wood chip. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. Uh, nice leaf mulch. Yeah. Another paper bag. Worms will like that. You might finish off with a bit of wood chip, wood chip on top. That'll give them something to hide under. Might even throw a couple of couple of bricks in the top just to keep that squished down. So um, that's it. Worm tower loaded. Compost made. So it's a pretty simple process, really, isn't it?
All right, so um, really the final thing to do is, uh, is fill her up and get it working. So there's two ways you can fill. One's through your inspection pipe, and because we're filling for the first time, I've got the hose running in there, and then the other spot you can fill is down through your worms. Now, of course, the advantage of this is that all those nutrients and all the worm castings will all filter down through this worm tower into the water reservoir and then back up into the uh, into the plant. So um, effectively being a, um, a closed circle uh, setup, which is uh, really the, the challenge I think of, um, of, of farming, be that on a, a backyard scale or a, uh, a commercial scale. So I think that'll do there. We'll um, we'll just wait for that. Um, we'll just wait for that for that to fill up. It's getting up there. There now we, uh, like we should always do, finish everything off. So it looks beautiful. And um, yeah, just one thing, just before we uh, we go. So. You can see how much water's in there by looking down the pipe. If you're not sure, you can always just use a, a depth gauge. You can see at the moment we're that deep, so we're probably about half full. So we'll leave this, uh, this hose going for a bit until the water comes out the, um, the overflow pipe, but um, I think really that's about it. So um, yeah, have a crack at one, especially if you built one of these babies first. See you later.